Here are 50 detailed and informative answers to the most commonly asked behavioral-based interview questions in automation testing. 1. Describe a time when you faced a major challenge in your automation testing career. How did you overcome it? Answer, in one project, we faced frequent application updates that broke our automation scripts. To overcome this, I implemented a robust framework using the page object model POM and incorporated dynamic locators. Additionally, I collaborated closely with the development team to understand changes beforehand and adjusted our scripts accordingly. This proactive approach significantly reduced script maintenance time and improved test stability. 2. How do you handle tight deadlines while ensuring the quality of your automation scripts? Answer. I prioritize tasks based on their impact on the project and focus on automating critical test cases first. I use modular and reusable components in my scripts to save time. Additionally, I perform regular code reviews and integrate continuous testing to identify and fix issues early. Clear communication with stakeholders about realistic timelines and progress. Also, helps manage expectations and deliver quality results under tight deadlines. 3. Can you describe a situation where you had to learn a new tool or technology quickly to complete a project? Answer. In a previous role, we decided to switch from Selenium to Cypress for front-end testing. Due to its faster execution and more reliable handling of asynchronous operations, I took the initiative to enroll in online courses and went through Cypress documentation. I also set up a pilot project to explore its features. Within a few weeks, I was able to create a comprehensive test suite, which significantly improved our testing efficiency and accuracy. 4. Have you ever disagreed with a colleague about a testing approach? How did you resolve it? Answer. Yes, there was a time when a colleague and I had different views on whether to use BDD. Behavior-driven development for our project. I proposed a meeting to discuss the pros and cons of both approaches with data-backed examples. We decided to run a pilot test using both methods and compared the outcomes. Eventually, we agreed on using BDD as it offered better readability and collaboration with non-technical stakeholders. This resolution fostered teamwork and mutual respect. 5. Describe an instance where your automation scripts identified a critical bug that manual testing missed. Answer. In one of my projects, our automation suite detected a critical issue in the payment gateway during regression testing. The automation script identified an edge case where specific coupon codes caused the transaction to fail which was missed during manual testing due to the vast number of possible coupon combinations. This bug, if left undetected, could have led to significant financial losses. The automated tests helped us catch and fix it before the release. 6. How do you ensure that your automation tests remain relevant and up-to-date with application changes? Answer. I maintain close communication with the development team to stay informed about upcoming changes and updates. I also follow a practice of updating the test cases alongside application changes. Additionally, I use version control for my test scripts and incorporate regular reviews and refactoring sessions to ensure that the tests remain relevant, efficient, and in sync with the latest application features. 7. What steps do you take to debug and resolve a failing automation script? Answer. First, I review the error logs and stack traces to understand the failure's root cause. I then reproduce the issue manually to ensure it's not an environmental problem. Next, I check the affected script section for any recent changes or flaky elements. If necessary, I add debug logs or breakpoints to capture detailed information during execution. Once identified, I fix the issue, rerun the tests to verify the resolution, and document the findings for future reference. 8. Describe a time when you had to work with a difficult stakeholder. How did you handle it? Answer. In one project, a stakeholder had unrealistic expectations regarding the automation coverage and timelines. 
I scheduled a meeting to understand their concerns and explain the current testing scope, challenges, and potential risks of rushing the process. I provided a detailed plan with phased deliverables, highlighting the benefits of a structured approach. By setting clear expectations and maintaining open communication, I was able to gain their trust and cooperation. 9. How do you prioritize test cases for automation? Answer. I prioritize test cases based on factors such as business criticality, frequency of use, and the likelihood of defects. High priority test cases include critical functionality, regression test cases, and those that are time consuming or prone to human error when executed manually. Additionally, consider test cases that provide quick feedback and those that cover multiple user scenarios to maximize the efficiency of the automation suite. 10. Have you ever had to deal with flaky tests? How did you address them? Answer. Yes. Flaky tests can be a significant challenge. To address them, I first analyzed the test to identify patterns or conditions causing the flakiness. Common issues include timing problems, network latency, or environmental dependencies. I use explicit weights, conditional checks, and retry logic to stabilize the tests. For persistent issues, I refactor the test to isolate and resolve the root cause, ensuring reliable and consistent test results. 11. What is your approach to writing maintainable and reusable test scripts? Answer. I follow best practices such as using the page object model POM to separate test logic from UI interactions. I use modular methods and functions to promote code reuse and avoid duplication. Additionally, I adhere to coding standards and use descriptive naming conventions. Regular code reviews, thorough documentation, and the use of version control help ensure that the test scripts are maintainable and easy to understand for other team members. 12. How do you handle situations where automated tests take longer to execute than manual tests? Answer. In such situations, I analyze the test suite to identify bottlenecks and optimize the scripts for performance. This may involve parallel execution, reducing unnecessary weights, and improving test data management. I also review the scope of the tests to ensure that only essential and high-impact test cases are automated. Additionally, I leverage efficient frameworks and tools that support faster execution, ensuring that automation adds value without compromising on time efficiency. 13. Describe a situation where you had to integrate automation testing into a CI or CD pipeline. Answer. In a recent project, I integrated our automation suite into the CI or CD pipeline using Jenkins. I created Jenkins jobs to trigger test execution automatically after each build deployment. I configured the jobs to run different test suites based on the environment and stage of the pipeline. Additionally, I set up notifications for test failures and integrated detailed test reports to provide immediate feedback. This integration helped us catch defects early and maintain a high-quality codebase. 14. How do you ensure cross-browser compatibility in your automation tests? Answer. To ensure cross-browser compatibility, I use tools like Selenium Grid or cloud-based services such as BrowserStack or Sauce Labs. These tools allow me to run tests across different browsers and versions. I write tests using WebDriver, which supports multiple browsers, and follow best practices for handling browser-specific issues. Regularly running tests on various browsers helps identify and address compatibility issues, ensuring a consistent user experience. 15. Can you describe a time when you had to automate a complex user journey? How did you approach it? Answer. I had to automate a complex user journey involving multiple steps including user registration, login, profile update, and transaction processing. I broke down the journey into smaller, manageable components and created separate page objects for each section. I then wrote modular test methods to handle each step and used a data-driven approach to test various scenarios. 
This structured approach ensured that the complex journey was automated effectively and maintained easily. 16. How do you handle test data management in automation testing? Answer. I handle test data management by separating test data from the test scripts and storing it in external files such as CSV, Excel, or databases. I use data-driven testing frameworks to parameterize test cases and manage different data sets. This approach allows for easy updates and reusability of test data across multiple test scenarios. I also ensure that sensitive data is masked or anonymized to maintain security and compliance. 17. Describe a situation where your automation testing efforts led to significant improvements in the development process. Answer. In one project, our automation testing efforts significantly reduced the regression testing cycle from two weeks to two days. By automating critical and frequently used test cases, we provided quick feedback to developers, allowing them to fix issues early. The increased test coverage and faster execution times improved the overall quality of the software and allowed us to meet tight release schedules, ultimately enhancing customer satisfaction. 18. How do you handle version control and collaboration in automation testing? Answer. Use version control systems like Git to manage and track changes in automation scripts. I follow branching strategies such as feature branches and pull requests to collaborate with team members. Regular code reviews and merge requests help maintain code quality and facilitate knowledge sharing. Using CI or CD tools, I ensure that automation tests are integrated and executed continuously, providing timely feedback and promoting a collaborative development environment. 19. Can you provide an example of how you optimized an existing automation framework? Answer. A previous project, I optimized our existing automation framework by implementing parallel test execution using test ng. This significantly reduced the overall test execution time. I also refactored the test scripts to use the page object model POM, which improved maintainability and readability. Additionally, introduced a reporting tool that generated detailed test reports, helping stakeholders quickly identify and address issues. 20. How do you stay updated with the latest trends and advancements in automation testing? Answer. I stay updated with the latest trends and advancements in automation testing by following industry blogs, attending webinars, and participating in online courses. I am an active member of testing communities and forums where I engage with peers and share knowledge. Additionally, I experiment with new tools and technologies in my projects to stay hands-on and continuously improve my skills and knowledge in automation testing. 21. Describe a time when you improved the efficiency of an existing automation testing process. Answer. In one project, I noticed that our automation tests were taking too long to execute due to redundant test steps and inefficient wait conditions. I analyzed the test suite and identified areas for improvement. By implementing parallel test execution and optimizing wait conditions using explicit waits, I was able to reduce the test execution time by 40%. Additionally, I refactored common test steps into reusable functions further streamlining the process. 22. How do you handle a situation where an automated test case fails intermittently? Answer. Admittent test failures can be challenging to debug. When faced with this issue, I first analyze the test logs and error messages to identify any patterns. I run the test multiple times to determine if the failure is consistent or random. Common causes of intermittent failures include timing issues, environmental instability, or flaky elements. I address these by implementing better synchronization techniques, such as explicit weights, and ensuring a stable test environment. If necessary, I refactor the test case to improve its reliability. 23. What strategies do you use to ensure your automation scripts are scalable? Answer. To ensure scalability. I follow best practices such as 
using the page object model palm to separate test logic from UI interactions. I also design my test scripts to be modular and reusable, allowing them to be easily extended as the application grows. Using a data-driven approach helps manage different test scenarios efficiently. Additionally, I leverage parallel execution and cloud-based testing platforms to handle large test suites and ensure scalability across different environments. 24. Can you describe a time when you had to mentor a junior tester on automation testing? Answer. In my previous role, I mentored a junior tester who was new to automation testing. I started by providing an overview of our automation framework and key concepts such as the page object model palm and data-driven testing. I paired with them on writing their first few test scripts, offering guidance and feedback. We also conducted regular code reviews and knowledge sharing sessions to address any questions they had. Over time, they became proficient in writing and maintaining automation scripts, contributing significantly to our testing efforts. 25. How do you handle conflicts within your testing team? Answer. Conflicts are inevitable in any team setting. When conflicts arise, I address them by fostering open communication and encouraging team members to express their viewpoints. I facilitate discussions to understand the root cause of the conflict and work towards a mutually acceptable solution. It's important to remain neutral and focus on the issue rather than personal differences. By promoting a collaborative and respectful environment, I help the team resolve conflicts and maintain a positive working relationship. 26. Describe a situation where you had to balance multiple priorities in an automation testing project. Answer. In a recent project, I had to balance multiple priorities, including regression testing, new feature automation, and performance testing. I started by identifying the most critical tasks and prioritizing them based on their impact on the project. I created a detailed plan and timeline allocating resources and setting clear milestones. Effective communication with the team and stakeholders ensured everyone was aligned and aware of the priorities. By focusing on high-impact tasks first and using efficient time management techniques, I successfully balanced multiple priorities and delivered quality results. 27. How do you handle a situation where your automation tests identify a critical bug just before a release? Answer. When an automation test identifies a critical bug just before a release, I immediately notify the development and QA teams. I provide detailed information about the bug, including steps to reproduce, logs, and screenshots. We then assess the severity and impact of the bug to determine the best course of action. If the bug is critical, we may delay the release to fix it. I also work closely with the developers to verify the fix and ensure that it doesn't introduce new issues. This collaborative approach ensures that we maintain the quality and reliability of the release. 28. What methods do you use to keep your automation scripts maintainable as the application evolves? Answer. To keep automation scripts maintainable, I follow best practices such as using the page object model palm to separate test logic from UI interactions. I also use version control systems to track changes and maintain a history of updates. Regular code reviews and refactoring sessions help identify and address potential issues early. Additionally, ensure that test scripts are well documented making it easier for new team members to understand and maintain them as the application evolves. 29. How do you handle security testing in your automation framework? Answer. Security testing is a crucial aspect of any testing strategy. In my automation framework, I incorporate security tests to identify vulnerabilities such as SQL injection, XSS, and authentication issues. I use tools like OASP, Zap, or Burp Suite to automate security scans and integrate them into the CI or CD pipeline. Additionally, I collaborate with security experts to ensure comprehensive coverage and address any identified vulnerabilities promptly. 
30. Describe a time when you had to automate a test case for a highly dynamic web application. Answer. Automating test cases for a highly dynamic web application can be challenging due to frequent changes in the UI. In one project, I faced this challenge and addressed it by implementing robust locators using CSS selectors and XPath. I also use dynamic weights to handle asynchronous elements effectively. To ensure the tests were maintainable, I used the page object model palm to abstract the UI interactions. This approach allowed me to quickly adapt the test scripts to changes in the application, ensuring reliable and efficient automation. 31. How do you ensure that your automation tests are robust and reliable? Answer. Ensuring robustness and reliability in automation tests involves following best practices such as using explicit weights, handling exceptions gracefully, and designing modular test scripts. I use the page object model palm to separate test logic from UI interactions, making the tests more maintainable. Additionally, I regularly review and refactor the test scripts to address any flaky tests and improve stability. Continuous integration and regular execution of tests help identify and fix issues early, ensuring reliable automation. 32. What is your approach to handling test data dependencies in automation testing? Answer. Handling test data dependencies involves creating a robust test data management strategy. I use external files such as CSV, Excel, or databases to store test data allowing for easy updates and reusability. I also implement data-driven testing to handle different scenarios efficiently to ensure data consistency and avoid dependencies between tests. I use setup and teardown methods to prepare the necessary data and clean up after each test. This approach ensures that each test case is independent and reliable. 33. How do you handle feedback and criticism regarding your automation testing work? Answer. I view feedback and criticism as opportunities for growth and improvement. I ask clarifying questions if needed and thank them for their input. I then reflect on the feedback and identify areas where I can improve. If the feedback is actionable, I take steps to address it and make necessary changes to my work. This approach helps me continuously improve and deliver high-quality results. 34. Describe a time when you had to collaborate with a cross-functional team to achieve a testing goal. Answer. In a recent project, we needed to implement end-to-end -end testing for a complex feature involving multiple teams, including development, QA, and DevOps. I facilitated regular meetings to ensure clear communication and alignment on goals. We collaboratively defined the test strategy, identified critical test cases, and set up the necessary test environments. By fostering a collaborative environment and maintaining open communication, we successfully achieved our testing goals and delivered a high-quality feature. 35. How do you handle test automation for legacy systems with limited documentation? Answer. Automating tests for legacy systems with limited documentation can be challenging. I start by exploring the system manually to understand its functionality and identify critical workflows. I also collaborate with domain experts and stakeholders to gather additional information. Once I have a good understanding, I create a high-level test plan and prioritize test cases based on business impact. I use tools like Selenium or Appium to automate the identified test cases, ensuring that they are robust and maintainable. Regular communication with stakeholders helps address any gaps in understanding and ensures comprehensive test coverage. 36. What is your approach to continuous improvement in automation testing? Answer. Continuous improvement in automation testing involves regularly reviewing and refining the testing process. I use metrics such as test coverage, execution time, and defect rates to identify areas for improvement. I also conduct retrospectives with the team to gather feedback and discuss potential enhancements. 
Staying updated with the latest tools and techniques in automation testing helps me incorporate new practices and technologies. By fostering a culture of continuous learning and improvement, I ensure that our automation testing process remains efficient and effective. 37. Describe a situation where you had to automate a non-web application. How did you approach it? Answer. Automating non-web applications, such as desktop or mobile applications, requires different tools and approaches. In one project, I needed to automate a desktop application. I used a tool like WinAppDriver, which supports automation for Windows applications. I started by identifying key functionalities and creating a test plan. I then implemented automation scripts using the page object model POM to separate test logic from UI interactions. By using appropriate tools and following best practices, I successfully automated the non-web application and achieved reliable test results. 38. How do you handle the reporting and analysis of automation test results? Answer. Reporting and analysis of automation test results are crucial for identifying issues and improving the testing process. I use test reporting tools such as TestNG, JUnit, or Allure to generate detailed reports. These reports provide insights into test execution status, including pass or fail rates, error messages, and screenshots. I also analyze the test results to identify trends and patterns, such as frequently failing tests or areas with high defect density. Sharing these insights with the team helps prioritize areas for improvement and ensures timely resolution of issues. 39. What is your approach to handling test automation in an agile development environment? Answer. In an agile development environment, test automation needs to be integrated into the development process to ensure continuous delivery. I work closely with developers and QA to define test cases and prioritize automation tasks. I use tools like Jenkins or Bamboo to integrate automation tests into the CI or CD pipeline, ensuring that tests are executed automatically with each build. Regular communication and collaboration with the team help address any issues promptly and ensure that automation tests are kept up to date with changes in the application. 40. Describe a time when you had to troubleshoot and resolve a complex automation testing issue. Answer. In a recent project, we encountered a complex issue where certain automation tests were failing sporadically. I started by analyzing the test logs and error messages to identify any patterns. I also reviewed the test scripts and the application under test to pinpoint potential causes. After thorough investigation identified a timing issue related to asynchronous elements. I implemented explicit weights and refactored the test scripts to handle dynamic elements more effectively. This resolved the issue and improved the stability and reliability of our automation tests. 41. How do you ensure that your automation tests are maintainable over time? Answer. Ensuring maintainability involves following best practices, such as using the page object model POM, to separate test logic from UI interactions, writing modular and reusable test scripts, and using version control systems to track changes. Regular code reviews and refactoring sessions help identify and address potential issues early. Additionally, I ensure that test scripts are well documented, making it easier for new team members to understand and maintain them. By following these practices, I ensure that our automation tests remain maintainable and scalable over time. 42. Describe a time when you had to automate a complex business process. How did you approach it? Answer. Automating a complex business process requires a thorough understanding of the workflow and its dependencies. In one project, I needed to automate a multi-step approval process involving various user roles and interactions. I started by documenting the process and identifying key test scenarios. I used the page object model POM to create reusable components for common actions and interactions. By breaking down the process into smaller, manageable test cases and integrating them, 
I successfully automated the complex business process, ensuring comprehensive test coverage and reliability. 43. How do you handle the integration of third-party APIs in your automation tests? Answer. Integrating third-party APIs into automation tests involves understanding the API's functionality and how it interacts with the application. I start by reviewing the API documentation and identifying the endpoints and parameters needed for testing. I use tools like Postman or Rest Assured to automate API testing and verify the responses. I also ensure that the API tests are integrated into the overall test suite and executed as part of the CI or CD pipeline. This approach ensures that third-party APIs are tested thoroughly and any issues are identified early. 44. What is your approach to handling test automation for microservices-based applications? Answer. Testing microservices-based applications requires a strategy that includes both API testing and end-to-end -end testing. I start by automating API tests for individual microservices using tools like Postman or Rest Assure. I then focus on end-to-end -end testing to ensure that the microservices interact correctly and the overall workflow is functional. Using a combination of unit tests, integration tests, and end-to-end -end tests ensures comprehensive coverage. I also ensure that tests are executed as part of the CI or CD pipeline, providing continuous feedback and identifying issues early. 45. Describe a time when you had to adapt to a new automation testing tool. How did you handle it? Answer. Adapting to a new automation testing tool involves a learning curve and a willingness to embrace change. In one project, we decided to switch from Selenium to Cypress for its better handling of modern web applications. I started by familiarizing myself with Cypress through documentation and tutorials. I also attended training sessions and collaborated with team members who had prior experience with the tool. By practicing and experimenting with sample projects, I quickly became proficient in Cypress and successfully transitioned our test suite to the new tool leveraging its capabilities to improve our automation testing process. 46. How do you handle the integration of automation tests with the CI or CD pipeline? Answer. Integrating automation tests with the CI or CD pipeline ensures continuous feedback and early detection of issues. I use tools like Jenkins, Bamboo, or GitLab CI to automate the execution of tests with each build. I configure the pipeline to trigger test runs automatically upon code commits or pull requests. Test results are then reported and analyzed, providing immediate feedback to the development team. This approach helps maintain code quality, reduces the risk of introducing defects, and ensures that automation tests are an integral part of the development process. 47. Describe a situation where you had to work with the remote team to achieve a testing goal. Answer. Working with the remote team requires effective communication and collaboration. In one project, I collaborated with the remote team to automate regression tests for a global application. We used communication tools like Slack and Zoom for regular meetings and updates. We also shared our progress and challenges through a shared project management tool like Jira. By maintaining open communication, setting clear goals, and leveraging collaboration tools, we successfully achieved our testing goals and delivered a high-quality application despite the physical distance. 48. How do you ensure the security and confidentiality of test data in your automation tests? Answer, ensuring the security and confidentiality of test data involves following best practices such as using data anonymization and masking techniques for sensitive information. I avoid using real production data in test environments and instead use synthetic or sanitized data. I also ensure that access to test data is restricted and follows the principle of least privilege. Additionally, I implement encryption for sensitive data and follow organizational policies and industry standards to protect test data from unauthorized access and breaches. 49. 
Describe a time when you had to automate a test case for a real-time application. How did you approach it? Answer. Automating test cases for real-time applications requires handling dynamic data and ensuring synchronization. In one project, I needed to automate tests for a real-time messaging application. I started by identifying key scenarios and using WebDriver's capabilities to interact with dynamic elements. I implemented explicit waits and used WebSocket listeners to verify real-time updates. By carefully designing the test scripts to handle dynamic data and ensuring proper synchronization, I successfully automated the test cases and validated the real-time functionality of the application. 50. How do you handle the maintenance and updating of automation test scripts? Answer. Maintaining and updating automation test scripts involves regularly reviewing and refactoring the scripts to address any changes in the application. I use version control systems like Git to track changes and maintain a history of updates. Regular code reviews and refactoring sessions help identify and address potential issues early. I also ensure that test scripts are well documented, making it easier for new team members to understand and maintain them. By following these practices, I ensure that our automation tests remain maintainable and scalable over time. This comprehensive set of questions and answers should provide a solid foundation for preparing for behavioral-based interviews in automation testing, covering various scenarios and demonstrating a deep understanding of best practices and problem-solving strategies in the field. For more exciting tips, tricks and more importantly, for valuable insights of interviews, please share, like, and subscribe to my channel. It has a lot of valuable information about various insights of interviews. It has a wide range of real-world portfolio projects of various technologies for interviews, and it has wide range of most asked interview questions and answers of various technologies like data science, SAP, AWS, DevOps, and full-stack web development, and more. That will be useful during interviews. It has a wide range of most asked interview questions and answers and real-world portfolio projects of various technologies for freshers. For two to three years, experienced candidates, and for five or above years, experienced candidates to test their skills by knowing most. Ask interview questions and make themselves ready for interviews.